Hello, good afternoon. It's a very, very pleasure to me to be here for you. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much to be here in our meeting. Uh, in, I also want to say thank you for participate in our in important meeting. This is the edition 10 of our, of our meeting. And I'm very, very, very uh, happy to be here with you. You are an um, important scientist, and we have a lot of questions for you. Well, it's been truly wonderful being here in Mexico. This is my first trip to Mexico, and this is a magnificent setting here in this hacienda, but especially listening to the science. Yeah. I mean, the students and the faculty talking about the science, the virology that's going on here in Mexico. I mean, there's truly some outstanding work that's going on. So it's been an absolute pleasure to be here. No, oh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe I have to start with uh, your name. You are Anne Simon. Please, could you tell us something about your bio skills? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I'm Anne Simon. I'm a professor at the University of Maryland, and I'm in the Department of Cell Biology and Molecular Genetics. I am also the head of the virology program at the University of Maryland, and I work on RNA viruses. Um, that infect plants, so it's a little different than most of the people at the meeting, but there's so much you can learn about animal viruses from studying plant viruses, because once a virus is inside a cell, it pretty much is doing the same thing. It doesn't care that yes. it's an animal or a plant. Yes. So we've been studying these viruses for a number of years, and uh, and it's it's been exciting. I mean, virology is a wonderful field. Okay, thank you very much. So we have some questions. That I, Absolutely. Yes. Um, I, we are interested in one thing very important for our students and for me, a lot of curiosity. What is your advice to achieve a successful scientific life? Ah, advice for As a you? successful <laughs> scientific life. Yeah. I think that first thing, nothing is more important than working hard and thinking. I think that students get very into the details of what they're doing and not looking at the big picture. So, so looking at the big picture, reading very broadly. If you work on a DNA virus, read about RNA viruses. If you work on an animal virus, read, read about, about plant, plant viruses, viruses, of course. Yes. And so that's important. It's important to find a niche for yourself, something that you are the world's expert on and then to exploit that system and make it visible to other people. So to um, collaborate with different people that will add to the research that you're doing, um, to, uh, for me as a principal investigator, to show my students how hard I work and how much I think and that they yeah, should be simple. doing the same. So leading by example. Yeah. So I think all of this, um, you know, thinking, being a good writer is so important, learning how to write. And of course, um, being able to communicate your research. It's, if you, you, you may be able to do good research, but if you cannot communicate it well through writing and through speaking, um, no one's gonna learn about it. Yes. So all of this is very important to having a successful oh, career. Did you answer the other question that I oh, had? Okay. Because uh, the other question, what, uh, what do you consider can be a set of skills? Maybe, like uh, as you told, uh, you got, uh, for your develop to improve the, your scientific career, your develop in your laboratory, and your, uh, for your, uh, as be an example for your students. Yes, so in, in my lab, I work very hard with my students to develop their writing skills and their communication skills. And it's very easy for a student to let the um, head of the lab write the papers and do the thinking for them and to simply go to them and ask, okay, what should I do today or, or you know, tell me what this means and not to actually think themselves. So what I try to do in my lab is to have everybody write up their own research, even the undergraduates in my lab, write their own papers. And I give them every opportunity to go to meetings and communicate their research. In other words, 
make the research theirs. It's, it's one thing for me to communicate it, but for them to actually go and show the world that they're the ones who did it, I think this is very important to their, for their future careers. Oh, okay. So there's, there's a lot of things that they need to work on in the lab, not just their research skills, but all of these other skills go into making you a, a good scientist, someone who will rise to the top of their field. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. And in the same question is, uh, you are a, an important editor of the most important biology uh, journals. Uh, being an editor, one of the most important journals, no? Uh, what, do you, what is your advice for young scientists to achieve a successful publication? You know, for all of us, the main goal is publish our results. What are your advice for you for do that? So I think my advice would be don't publish too early. Uh, so in other words, take the time to develop the project. Take the time to to explore other areas, to make this a full story. Um, it's, much, it's easy to publish sort, short mm -hmm. versions of what you have, but you can't publish them in the best journals. Mm -hmm. And when you publish something in, in lower ranked journals, you have people asking, why is this being published there? When you have things that are published in high ranked journals, it gets read, it gets thought about, it gets discussed at journal clubs. Mm -hmm. And this is how you become prominent and you make a name for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, hold back on your publishing until you really have something that is, that you, that is worth communicating to people. Mm -hmm. um, and then do a really good job writing it up, find the right journal, find the right editor. Editor, <laughs> as you. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, and then don't, you know, if, when you get the results of what the reviewers say, mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to get in touch with the editor. Mm -hmm. You know, ask the editor, do I have to do these experiments? Or can you give me some more advice? Or, you know, what if I do this and this, but not this? Mm -hmm. Will that be acceptable for the journal? So use the editor. We expect this, but we, there are people in the United States who communicate very freely with the editors, but people in other countries generally don't, and they should. And they should. It would be an advantage to them to do this. Yes, yes. Uh, it's for example, like in Mexico, we, our sponsors of the, re, the projects, need, we need to, to give results. And one of the most important results are the, well, the publish uh, the, the articles. Yes, you know? of course. And sometimes I think it's important to, to report, to publish. Uh, also, the, the important things even if they are minimal things. What do you think about it? I think if you, you don't want to put too many very important results in one yes. paper because then that diffuses the message. So make sure that the message is strong. So if you have a strong message in a short paper, there are very good journals to publish in. But if you have a complete story, that's important. Go ahead and try for one of the, the top journals. And again, you can always, I have um, uh, scientists who will actually send me the paper by email and just say, is this paper appropriate for mm -hmm. Journal of Virology? What do you think? So before they actually go through the, the whole process of, of, of uh, submitting a paper, they'll ask me and I will give them some very good advice about it. Mm -hmm and then and tell them if the, it isn't appropriate where it might be appropriate and having been an editor now for the journal of virology for 11 years mm -hmm. i pretty much know what the reviewers are going to like and what is not going to be quite up to the right standards and sometimes i can give them some advice and say well if you just did this experiment or followed up this part of it then it would be appropriate for the journal oh, okay it's so communicate with the editors yes this is necessary and for the last, uh, my last uh, okay. <laughs> is if you have the chance to go back in the time, would you choose the same career? Would you so that's an excellent things? question. And it's a question that I communicate to the students. I teach introduction to biology for freshmen. So I talk about what it's like to be a scientist. And I'll tell you what I tell them. What I tell them is that I cannot think of a single day in my entire career where I did not want to go into work. 
not one day where I said to myself, gee, I would rather stay home yes. and not go in. That's I love what oh. I do. Yes. I somehow got into the perfect field for me. I love mysteries. I love figuring things out that have never been figured out before and coming up with ideas that no one's ever thought of before. And for me, I cannot, absolutely cannot think of a better career than a career in science. It's, it's hard work, yeah. but you are your own boss. You decide what you're doing. You decide what hours you're working. You decide you, you know hard. how yeah you know, how hard you're working yeah, and hopefully yes. you're deciding yeah, it's yeah. really hard but but it's a wonderful career yeah. and and I I strongly encourage um, intelligent young people to think about science because every day is different and I I'm just so grateful to an eighth grade teacher for getting me into science no one in my family is in science only no. me and it was an eighth grade teacher who said, who put me in a special class and said, I'm putting you in here because you're good in science. Yes. And I'm like, am I? And she says, yes. yes. Yeah. And from that moment, I ended up going into science. Mm -hmm. That was the moment that started it. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. It was, it was a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to thank this wonderful meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Yeah.